A perfect start to our season so far. Four wins on the board. We've got plenty of action in Costa Rica. And we wrap up group play in the CONCACAF Central American Cup. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 51 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you have enjoyed the series so far, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Please and thank you. A ton of action to get to today. We are kicking things off on the road in the league, the opening stage of the Primera División. We're taking on San Carlos. We've got ourselves a handful of changes for this league match. Michael Sambarto is going to get the start as our left back, which means Daniel Herrera is going to move over to the right-hand side. Meanwhile, Randy Duarte going to be making his debut, the new pickup. We've got Jose Pablo Espinosa as the right wing. Coming in at the number 10 will be Johnny Castro. And leading the line once again is Esteban Cordero. Always a little nervous about the road matches, especially when we are rotating our squad. But we have discovered that playing at Saprissa in Costa Rica, it is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. One win, one draw so far on the year for San Carlos. Saprissa, well, you know how we've done. Four wins, two in the league, two in the continental competition as we get set to play on the road, taking on San Carlos and an early corner kick opportunity for Daniel Herrera. Looking to send it in. Can't pick out Innocente. One back, though. Espinosa with the ball. Drops it. Fill him Getch with the shot, but it's going to sail high and wide. I think as long as we maintain the pressure that we've put on in the last couple of matches, we'll be fine, except Harold Montero off of the corner. His second goal of the year, so very dangerous in FM24. Those low corners to the edge of the box, frankly, I don't really know what to do about them. Steven Akista got out there. I thought he was putting that pressure in on Montero. Sadly, he was just too little, too late. Which means we find ourselves down 1-0 as we tick down to the final five minutes of this first half. Goalkeeper sending it long for San Carlos. They are able to maintain control. Montero moving it up the left wing. Gets past one man. Feeds it ahead. Cordero taking it deep in the box. Drops it back. Montero once again. Looking back post. And that's going to sail just out of the reach of Mohamed Conte. And go out for a goal kick for Saprissa. 45 minutes in the books. Not the 45 minutes that we were hoping to have. We find ourselves down at the interval by a score of 1-0. to nil. So we kind of let the team know how unhappy we were in the team talk. Winning it back in the middle third. Just over a minute played so far in the second half. Conte in control. He's going to launch it forward. Does he have Cordero? He does. Cordero in. And a goal for Esteban Cordero. His third of the year. Mohamed Conte picking up the assist. Brilliant, brilliant play from our goalkeeper. Beautiful vision. Sending it forward past the back line of San Carlos to equalize this at one. Gesh with a corner. Can't win it. Innocente goes for the bicycle kick. <laughs> and if he kept it down just a little bit, that would have been easily the goal of the season in match week three. I mean, I love watching my players go for the bicycle kicks. Now, when it's a center back, maybe not so much, but an offensive player, I still haven't seen one scored with my own eyes in FM 23 or 24. Ball sent into the middle, played away. Regained uh, by San Carlos, though. Lopez looking to lump it forward. He's got Cordero in, quickly putting the header past Conte. Was he onside? The flag does remain down. If it counts, it's San Carlos 2, Saprissa 1. Cordero unable to win the ball in the middle third. Lopez moving it to his right foot, playing it forward. It looks like Cordero was able to bend his run just enough Put it past Conte to regain the lead. Was he offside? Let's check the line. Yeah. I can admit when I am wrong, and Cordero was most definitely onside for that play. So with about 20 minutes left to go, let's check about uh, making some alterations. Randy Duarte feeling a little nervous. So Freddy Gonzalez, your day off is over. 
you are coming in. Espinoza will also be replaced by Vitan Tusha, who has gotten 70 minutes of rest. He's going to need to enjoy it. Two alterations made to the lineup with just over 15 minutes remaining in this match. Meanwhile, we're going to go just a little bit more attacking, and we are going to demand more from our team, even though we all know, thank you, Miles, for letting us know that those really don't have any effect, but it does make us feel better. Sadly, though, it doesn't look like it is going to do anything. Not another highlight to be seen. Full time has been achieved, and we lose for the first time on the season 2-1 on the road. And I have no idea how this is uh, figured out. We are just four matches in, but on August the 12th, we have been able to qualify for the Caribbean Cup. A training injury picked up by Daniel Herrera has made us reevaluate our depth at the left back position. Yes, we did just bring in Michael Sambartaro, but we really don't have anybody over there except for Freddy Gonzalez, but we're playing him in the middle. So we have dipped back into the Herediano pool and picked up 21-year-old Robert Salazar. He is very good physically, not that tall and not that strong with his crossing ability technique, and he is a very hard worker, all very good. Hopefully, he will add just that extra little bit of depth to the side. But our primary concern is really, can we bounce back from our first loss of the season? Taking on 11th place Grecia at home, I hope that the answer is yes. Steven Akis to edge of the box. Cordero finds a cunning Morera for his third goal of the season to make it 1-0 Saprissa. We would add a second. Aquista winning a tackle battle up for Espinoza. Jose Pablo Espinoza with the goal. Still loving the Mohawk. 2-1 Saprissa. Grizia would get one back in the 76th minute. Sanchez into the box. Finding Reyes cutting through the middle past Conte to make it 2-1. But that is where we would end up. Back to the Central American Cup, taking on H&H &H Export at home. And uh, yeah, we got things started relatively early. Ramon feeding Tusha in the middle for his first goal of the game. Yes, I said first goal of the game. Ramon, Ramirez, Braun, Tusha from range. There's number two. It's 2-0, Saprissa. And it's just kept going from there. Herrera, Alfaro, Ramirez charging forward. Getting it back, putting it home. William Ramirez getting the start as our number 10. He would have a hat trick on the night. He would not be the only one. Daniel Herrera flipping it forward. Alfaro, the goalkeeper Fox charging out. Bad choice. Alfaro picking up a tally to make it 4 0. Alfaro with it, dropping it for Braun. Forward. Alfaro, his second on the night. 5 0. Saprissa. And we weren't done. Ramirez finding Tusha behind the defense. He picks up his third of the afternoon, making it 6-0. Alfaro, we're still in the first half, by the way. Ramon taking it himself this time. Beautiful blast with his left foot. His first goal of the season. 7-0. Saprissa, yes, we would add an eighth in the first half. Alfaro finding Tusha, his fourth of the match. We would end up pulling him at halftime to make way for some younger players, namely Fonseca getting his first action. Alfaro Ramirez, his second of the match. I mentioned that he had three. It's 9-0 Saprissa. Then Mora playing left back this time. The 22-year-old Luis Mora finding Ramirez in the middle. And nothing that Fox could do. Alejandro Brand with the penalty kick. Adding yet another one. 11-0 Saprissa. Let's make it an even dozen, shall we? Ramon, another assist. Alfaro, another goal for his hat trick. 12-0 before H&H &H Export finally got one back. In the 87th minute, second goal of the year for Perez. It was all for naught. 12-1. Your final, and we have secured qualification into the knockout stages of the CONCACAF Central American Cup. First place is still on the line, so we're not going to be making any programming changes for this episode. Hoping to make it three in a row on the road at Punta Arenas. Nothing going on in the first half. And it wasn't until this strike by Lorenzetti before the scoring was opened up. First shot of the game 
for the home team. We realized we were playing on such a narrow pitch. We narrowed up our formation, went more attacking, and it paid off. Jose Pablo Espinosa slotting it past IU to tie things up. And then with three minutes or so remaining in regular time, Gomez took it in, his first goal of the year, putting us up 2-1, and that is where we would end up. So we are going to be training a narrow version of the tactic just in case we finally found ourselves a team that doesn't have a wide pitch in Costa Rica. Just because we've already qualified for the knockout rounds of the CONCACAF Central American Cup doesn't mean that this is not a huge match as we wrap up group play against Municipal of Guatemala. They have also qualified, but we have yet to sew up the number one seed. So we're sending out our big guns for this match going up against the 4-3-3 of Municipal. Conte is going to be getting the starting goal. It will be Herrera, Innocente, Gonzalez, Cordero, Aquista, Chacon, Marrera, Tusha, Getch, and Lopez is back from injury. He will be leading the line at striker. Don't worry, Cordero is on the bench just in case we need him. Municipal in the red, Zaprisa in the purple with the white chevron. We are on the road for this match, so maybe at a slight disadvantage as we enter this competition. We are on nine points through three matches, a perfect 3-0-0. Municipal managed seven points in their first three. They come into this one. If they win, they will supplant us at the top of the table. Now, this is the first time we have ever managed in the CONCACAF Central American Cup, so I don't know what the difference is going to be or mean for us, I should say, in the knockout rounds by being the number one seed versus the number two. I'd like to just take all question out of it and just win the whole damn thing. Municipal in control. We played over 30 minutes of this match, and so far no scoring on either side. Marita tries to work his way around Cordero. He does. Marita into the middle, headed away by Herrera. Tusha will regain control and push it forward. Into the middle, he's got Marrera. He did have to stop and wait for that pass, which didn't quite lead him in the way that we would have liked to see. Sefuentes back for Bolaños. Ramirez looking for Sefuentes in between the defense, and he tucks it past a diving Conte to put Municipal up 1-0. I mean, it is so immensely disappointing to think that we have been near perfect all season long and our hopes for getting back to the CONCACAF Champions Cup could rest on whether we win this one match in the group stage. Corner in from Cordero. Cleared away. Gets. We'll leave it back to Cordero on the left wing. Drop to Innocente. Herrera turns, fires, and launches it just a little too high. So there it is, the first half in the books. We managed five shots on goal, but we did not hit the target a single time. We need to do better than that in the second half to somehow bounce back trailing 1-0. So we're going to ask the team to show a little bit of desire. Not like they don't, but hopefully we can stoke that fire underneath their butts and get them going here in this second half. We are going to shout, demand more to our team. It is our favorite thing to do after all, but we've crossed the hour mark and we still have not been able to put the ball past the municipal goalkeeper. So far, Ochoa has had a very good game, although a relatively quiet one because, well, we have only put a single shot on goal, or on target, I should say, of our nine. Tusha is tired, so Ramon is going to take his place, as is Akista. Alejandro Brand coming in. We'll leave in Emmanuel Chacon. I don't want to replace our entire midfield. Now, Nassim Innocente is furious. Hugo Cordero is frustrated. I hear both of you guys. So Cordero is going to come out. Daniel Herrera will flop over to that side. And Michael Sambataro will come in as we make a triple change with just over 10 minutes remaining in this match. We're going to go very attacking and demand more one more time. But I don't think... The way things are going, it's going to make much of a difference. We have dominated this game in a number of ways, particularly in shots on goal. But again, just the one on target as Municipal looking to get one, uh, another one on the board and seal this with 30 seconds left to go. They'll just drop it all the way back to their back line. Sosa, the Sosa. Albazunes finally making its way. Vasquez is in. He 
hits Conte. Good save, but it will lead to a municipal corner as time is running out in this match. And it looks like we are going to end up second in the group. And we are going to bookend tremendous performances in this episode with losses. Unexpected losses on either side of a ton of glorious wins. The goal from Marvin Cifuentes was the difference. Again, just the one shot on target for Saprisa. That is a problem. So we've lost twice all year long, and you got to see them both live this morning. Aren't you lucky devils? The loss does draw us with Olympia from Honduras in the quarterfinals. It's going to be a two-legged affair. That is going to be coming up on Monday's episode, and I hope to see you then. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you've just not gotten around to it already, and I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Till then, bye-bye.